You know how on some mobile applications that you use, you have the ability to either swipe left or swipe right and different menus pop up? Well, that's called a gesture effect. And I'm gonna show you how we can create our very own gesture effects inside of our Power Apps Canvas apps. I'll break down how it's done right after this. So first, let's take a look and remind ourselves of what we're gonna be building. So here I have a contact management application where I have a list of contacts. And I wanna be able to swipe left from the right-hand side and have a menu pop up with additional options to see more information about that contact or to delete the contact. This is the functionality that we're trying to replicate. So I have my contact management Power App open. It's optimized for the mobile device and it's a Canvas Power Apps application. Let's dissect how I built this functionality piece by piece. I started by going to our insert menu and adding in a vertical gallery control. This is what allows me to have a list of contacts. If we go into our data sources menu here on the left-hand side, you see that I added in a data source for a SharePoint list. If we look at the data behind the scenes, it's a simple list where I have someone's name, email, and their profile picture. And I associated that SharePoint list with this gallery that I added. So I bound that here in my data source. Inside this gallery, I went to insert media and added an image control and insert text and added a label to store the name. I bound the image control image property to my picture and the label to the title field in my SharePoint list. Now that's the basics, let's get to the good stuff of how I did that gesture effect. And that's all done using a slider control. So if we go to insert and input, one of the options we'll see here in this list is a slider. So I added one of those slider controls inside of my gallery so that for each row in this gallery, it has an associated slider. We're not seeing it here visible on the screen because I've changed some of the colors so that it's not visible. That's because I wanna use the functionality of the slider to go left and right, but not actually see the slider itself. So let's actually just add a new slider control in here so you can see what it looks like by default and I'll show you some of the changes I made to hide it. The slider control gives us a horizontal line and a little circle where we can drag and drop that slider horizontally across the screen. We have different properties. If we look at the properties pane on the right hand side for this control, we can actually change the layout. So it doesn't have to be horizontal. It can also be vertical. So if you wanted to do something where you're swiping up and down on the screen, we can use this same control for that also by simply changing the layout property. The other property you'll wanna be aware of is this default property. You see when we position the slider on our screen, the circle or also known as the handle is right in the middle of the slider. That's because we have the default property set at 50 and the maximum allowed value set to 100. For the use that I want it, I want someone to be able to swipe from right to left to show that menu. So one of the first things we wanna do here is change this default property from 50 to 100. That will position the circle or the handle all the way to the right of the screen. Now the other thing I did was change the width of this. So I just simply drag and drop this so that it's aligned roughly only to the last half of the row. So if we were to run this, we can see how this slider control operates. We can hover over this handle, click, hold, and drag, and the value is changing as we drag it. So this is giving us a way to be able to tell where the value is, and we can read off of this to show or hide things. So that's basically how the slider control functions. The only other thing I did here, again, to essentially make it not visible on my screen was adjust a few key properties. First, we have this radio button to show the value. And what that means, if we play this again, is when I hover over this handle, you see it's showing the number 32. And as I drag and hold it, it's changing the number. Now for our use case of using this for a simple gesture, we don't want that visible. So we're going to hide that. So we'll turn that setting off and we'll go down here to the rail. So the rail is this line that's showing. So how I hid that was simply going to the rails fill property and changing it to transparent. So it blends in with the background. So you see, as soon as I do that, that goes away. And then I just went into a couple of more properties here, like the value fill, I changed that to transparent as well. Same thing for the handle fill, make that transparent, and all of these hover properties as well. So now you see it's there, but it's not visible. Now that we know how the slider control works and how I styled it to make it not visible on the screen, let's switch our attention to the menu. So if you recall, as I slide the slider, I want this menu to show. All this is, is two separate buttons. So what I did here was go to insert and button, 
And you see I have one called button delete, which is this button on the right, and then button more. I did a little bit of styling on the delete button to remove the border radius and change the background color. If we look at its text property, I hard coded the word delete and I simply pasted in an emoji from the emoji shortcut keyboard to have a wastebasket icon in there. For the more button, same thing. All I did was change the border radius and the fill color. And on the text property, also use the emoji keyboard for these three dots and the word more. So that's about it for the design aspect. Now we have to get into the formulas. And how do we write the logic to make it work so that when I slide that, it shows and hides the buttons. So on our delete button here, if we go to its visible property, you'll see I have a very simple power FX formula. I'm using an if statement and I'm keying off of the selected item in the gallery and there's a property for that called is selected. So if the item is selected and the slider value is less than 100, meaning I have moved that from its default value of 100, then I want this to be visible. Otherwise, I don't want it to be visible. And the reason why I'm using this is selected and not just keying off of the slider value is because we're using this control inside of a gallery. So when I slide it over, I don't want every single one of the buttons to be visible, only the one I currently have selected. So to show you what I mean by this, if I were to delete this particular piece of my if statement and play the application, you see as I slide, the delete shows on every single row, which is not what we want, which is why that little piece of the function is really important. And I simply repeated that for the more button as well. And actually, instead of repeating the formula on the visible property, I'm gonna show you a quick tip here. I can remove this and I can set the mores button visibility to my button delete, since that's where I already put in the formula, dot visible to get its visible property. So that's basically telling this more button that, hey, whatever formula or thing that you have on the delete button's visible property, just do the same thing here on the more button. And this is just generally a good practice that I personally follow. So that if I ever need to make a change to a formula and it's duplicate in multiple places, I only have to make that change in one spot. So that simple formula will ensure that when I slide that slider over to the left, make it less than 100 or default value, it will show these particular buttons. The only other thing that I really did here, if we look at the items in our gallery, is I added one additional button called Profile Info, and I overlaid it on top of the image and the label. And I did this for a very specific reason. So if we play the application, I want to have this gesture effect to show the menu, but I also want the user to be able to click on one of these items, like say Alex here or Morgan, and directly go to a profile screen. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I use the galleries on select property and add that functionality in there instead of putting it inside of a button? Well, that's because that applies for everything that you click on in the gallery. So since I'm using this slider control, that means if I were to click on the slider, it would put in whatever logic I have on my galleries on select and mess things up. Plus, one of the things I love about buttons is it gives you a pointer. So labels out of the box don't have a pointer on your cursor. It looks just like this. So this is giving the user a visual indicator that this is a clickable link. So there's only one last piece of this that you need to know to make sure that this slider functionality works properly. So with this menu, if I click say the more button and I have this other pop-up menu and I click cancel, I want everything to disappear. So I want not only this menu to disappear, but also the buttons. Similarly, if I slide that and I press delete, I want the item to be deleted and the button to be hidden again. So let me show you how we ensure that as we click some of the buttons that show that the slider resets and the buttons get hidden again. So on our slider control itself, if we go to the properties pane in the upper left-hand panel, there's a special property for the control called reset. The default value of this is a Boolean value, true or false. But you see what I'm doing here is I'm actually using a variable that I have this set to called var reset slider. This is very important to make sure that it's being reset correctly for the functionality. So what I'm doing is on my delete button, on the on select, now I don't have my delete code in here yet because I don't want to delete my test data, but I would obviously add that in here. And then after the deletion, this is the power FX formula that we need to be able to reset that slider properly. So I'm using an update context to have a local variable called var set slider. And you see I'm setting it to true, but then right after I set it to true, I'm setting it to false. 
You might be wondering why I'm doing both. And that's because this is a Boolean value. So the reset needs to be toggled back and forth. So if I'm setting it to true, meaning reset it back to the default value of 100, then it will be stuck on true if I were to click it again and it wouldn't get triggered. So I set it to true, that resets the control and I set it back to false so that next time I need to click a button and have a reset, it functions properly. So hopefully that makes sense. So anytime you're doing this and using the reset property, use a variable like this, set it to true and then set it right back to false. So anywhere that I want to cause a reset of my slider, I'm simply going to use these two update contacts. And that is about it. Those are the steps needed to be able to replicate and build a gesture type functionality like we have here inside of your Power Apps. So for my case, I'm doing a gesture from right to left. We could do the same concept to do it from left to right and have some kind of buttons show up here. And as I mentioned earlier, up and down gestures as well. So I hope this gives you some inspiration to see how you could use this in your Power Apps. All right, that's all that I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and click subscribe. And if you're curious about how I built that pop-up menu, let me know and I can make a future video on it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Before you leave, check out some of my other videos on how to build things in Power Apps.